All right, so at this point, what I'm able to confirm is that the pop-up appears, and it can confirm which button I pressed and the input box. I'm going to get back to Notepad. And the whole point of this is to uh, capture the name, which it seems that I'm able to do because the console is displaying that uh, that I am pressing a button and typing a name. I'm going to comment those items. Well, I'll, I'll leave them there for the moment. But what I want to do with that data then is actually uh, store it to use it on screen. Now, the way that will work is we're going to use something called local storage, which is a way to save data in the device, basic data. It's kind of like a cookie, and it saves data, and it's right on the device itself, and nothing really special you need to do. So here's what we'll, we'll do. After these console outputs, next line, we'll start typing local storage with a capital S dot username. Local storage is the magic. Local storage is what lets you create and retrieve basic data in our app. We can, of course, look up documentation to see how that fully works. But we can create just about any piece of data as a string when we name it right here. We're creating data, we're creating a cookie, so to speak, called username as part of the local storage object built into the device. Uh, I use that exact same syntax to, uh, to save or retrieve data. Space equals results dot input one. Semicolon, end of the line. So local storage, and make sure that's a capital S on local storage. Uh, we're, we're referencing an existing object or creating a new one called username. And we're filling it with what the person typed. I confirm that that works up here on console. Whatever the person typed is going to get saved to the local storage object, the, the storage in the, in the app. Well, the possibilities here are that um, the person typed nothing, or the person typed gibberish, or the person pressed canceled, right? The prompt has those various possibilities. So I don't want to display gibberish if the person didn't type anything proper, I want to display what the actual person's name was, if they put a name. So we need to do a conditional statement here to check on a few things. Next line, we'll start with if. And if has the open and the close parentheses. <coughs> open and close curly braces. I'll close the curly brace on a separate line. So my, my if, I'm, I'm checking which of the buttons was pressed. I'm assuming in my case there's either the go or the no. There's the save or the cancel. Button one, button two. <coughs> so I'm going to start off by saying, if the person canceled, don't do anything. If the person did save, do something. That's what the if will do here. So we're going to say, uh, results dot button index we need to check remember it doesn't care what names we gave it it's either button one button two button three so we have to say equals 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 two that's three equals a plain old equals basically puts the thing on the right into the thing on the left double equal or triple equal actually checks for equality. Does the thing on the right equal to the thing on the left? <coughs> double equal would check. Is the button index currently 2? Is 
2 equal to 2. Triple equals also checks for a type, because we can have strings, we can have numbers, we can have arrays, we can have types. So triple equal, equal says check if that's a number 2, and it is a number 2, not a string 2, because that could cause issues. If it's a cancel, then we don't really have to do anything here, but I'll just put some console output for us, the developer, to say user cancel. We have two buttons. We have a go button, we have a no button. So if they cancel, nothing has to happen on screen. They cancel. But for us, the developer will give us some output just to see that that worked. I'm assuming only button one or button two. So what will come next is the uh, assuming that the person typed something. This also is necessary for for um, being able to save the data. We need to check one thing. Was data actually saved? In theory, the person could you know, go to the prompt and, and click the, the prompt and type nothing into the box. There's a way that I can personalize and type nothing and yet click OK. That's also not good data. Um, if they type nothing, I don't want that to mess. I don't want that to mess up. So what had happened was undefined data was saved. So we will further check here. Okay, if a person typed cancel, do this. If a person typed OK but they didn't enter anything, that's a problem too. So we'll now have an else if. We're going to check another possibility that has then an open and close curly brace. Check for one possibility that didn't happen okay, or else if this other possibility. So we can string together lots of possibilities. We can do another else if for a third possibility, another else if for a fourth possibility. It's one way to do this conditional statement, to check conditions. What I want to do in this part of the check is, um, is, that, is that local storage object empty, or is it null, or is it you know, garbage data? So what we'll do is say local storage dot username equals 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 undefined. They clicked OK, but they never <coughs> typed anything. That data could be undefined. So again, check. Is the data in the local storage object that we think we saved up here, is it undefined? If it is, then that's an error, and we'll, we'll display an error. What the person can also type, there's other ways that they could accidentally type something wrong. So we'll, we'll <coughs> need to check uh, for more possible undefined elements. The way I'll do this is let's wrap one more parentheses around this whole local storage thing. So I have the parentheses for if, but wrap one more parentheses around this, uh, this uh, statement. One more parentheses, because then I'm going to check for another possibility at this moment. Space. And in some languages, I can type or. Check for this, or this, or this, or this. In JavaScript, we have to type the vertical pipe character twice, which is shift backslash. Not slash, which is where the question mark is. Backslash, which is near the enter and the backspace. Backslash. Shift backslash. Let's say pipe character. That means or in JavaScript check if my local storage object is undefined, or check if it's the following. So I'm going to put another parenthesis pair. In that parenthesis, I'm going to do the same thing. Local storage dot username equals equals null, because the possibility could be null. Local storage dot username 
equals 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 null in quotes. And I'll do one more check because then it could be empty in a different kind of way. So I'll do the same thing. Uh, after this pair of parentheses, space, or, and then local stories, I use a name equals empty. Space. Parentheses. Local storage dot username equals 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 empty is just going to be open quote end quote that's empty nothing not the word empty that's what empty is in here an empty string so we're checking three possibilities and there could be more but we're checking three possibilities of bad data being put in here an empty space you know they were gonna they accidentally press space and press enter too fast or something uh, so here we're checking three things within this extra if else if yes that's just the way it is because in JavaScript it sees undefined as a special kind of object as a reserved keyword of undefined and null is kind of different. So our first check is, did they cancel? Our second check is, okay, they didn't cancel, but is what they're putting in undefined? Is it null? Is it empty? We'll have some stuff in here in just a moment. And oftentimes when we have an if-else statement, we have one final terminating one, else. That's if all else fails. Try this, or this, or this, or this. If all of those fail, we have a final else. Um, we're, we're checking for possible things going wrong. So if we didn't find any of those wrong things or else, the final result is it's all good. Display the message. And for the moment, we'll do an alert, and then we'll do it the right way. We will say, in quotes, welcome, comma, space, after the quote plus, results, <coughs> dot in, or I'm sorry, uh, local storage, dot username. We're not using results input name anymore. We've stored it in the permanent cookie. So if all of these failures did not happen, the opposite of failure is success. So we have a success. Welcome, John. The stuff that further happens here, we need to test even more. This is why there, there are bugs in software, because the developers have to figure out possibilities. How can a person make a mistake? I think I've said before, there's no foolproof code because there's so many ingenious fools. And so we have to take that into account and do the beta testing, do the alpha testing, and all of that, and figure out what are some possible wrong possibilities? So that's what this second else if is about. Let's define here inside of else if switch, the switch statement. Switch is another way to test for possibilities. Maybe it's a little more elegant than the if else. It doesn't quite matter which one we use. Maybe there's concerns of efficiency and such, but any one of these that will work works. What I'm trying to check here now inside the switch statement is what, what was saved, what actually was saved in the local storage object. So we're checking local storage 
dot username. Based on what's in that, we have some cases. We have some possibilities. Next line case. Empty. Colon. We will alert the user. Please enter a valid name. An empty space is not a valid name. And that breaks. So if an empty name was saved into the local storage object, we get a certain the user gets a certain feedback. We have another case, another possibility. We have null. So no name saved. the case of undefined. I'll make that say the same thing, no name saved. And then we often have, as a last result, res as the last resort here, we have a default. I didn't think about what a possibility could have been, so on this, for the developer, I'll just put into the console the uh, local storage object. And that breaks. Can you say that again? But its own default for what? Uh, yeah, I can answer that. Does JavaScript have its own default? Its own default what? What are, what are we talking about? For example, it does not match those tags, and the default is scanner or... Oh, um... Good question. I'm uh, not exactly sure what to say about that. We should set a default. That's why it's there. So there, so probably nothing will happen if, if we don't define a default. We should so that we can deal with a possibility we didn't think of. Now all of this is happening, if you remember, all of this is happening within one function, the got name OK. So we need to um, return this data back out to the uh, to the larger scope of the of the project because any of this that's happening is only existing basically in the scope of this function, in the world of this function. Whatever happens here, we want to return this data to the whole app, the rest of the app. So we'll have one more return statement before the end of the got name OK. There's one curly brace which closes the else. And then there's a curly brace that closes the got name. So above that we'll need a new line. And there what we'll do is return, type return, uh, the local storage object. Now that can be used in other parts of the app. Since we created it 
in the function a couple of lines up, if we hadn't done this, we would only be able to use that saved name in this function. Returning it makes it available for other parts of the program. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to run this in my browser. I'm going to run this in the browser, and I have a couple of possibilities that could happen. I'm going to keep an eye out in my console. I'm going to try to debug this. Let's see, so I'll open up the console. We get a bunch of basic results in the console, which uh, you should just ignore, like uh, this one says logo.ping not found. Just ignore that. And all of this looks good here. So if you get maybe one or two red errors, some of it is somewhat normal. And the way, to, the way to fix that is you just click this button right here to clear your console and ignore it. What I want to do now is see how this works. So I'll go back to the personalize. If I click cancel, I already know that that worked somewhat. I clicked button 2 and it was empty. And what happened is user canceled. So there's the part uh, of my statement. User canceled. It found that the button that was pressed was 2. So user canceled. Okay, this time I'm not going to type anything, but I'll press OK. A pop-up. Please enter a valid name. So what happened is I triggered the, the next part over here, else if. It must have been one of these three. Which one exactly was it? Please enter a valid name. It was empty. I didn't type anything. So it popped up, please enter a valid name. The null and the undefined are other possibilities that could happen, uh, and those will give you some other pop-ups. A real result is if I type a real name, John, and then I click OK. <coughs> Welcome, John. Because what happens here, it wasn't this possibility, it wasn't this possibility, it was the final else. Alert. Welcome, John. If you if you put no data at all, that's going to be one of the possibilities, empty. So it should say something like, enter a valid name. Canceling is just canceling. Even if I enter data, but cancel, it's still going to hit, it's going to find the user canceled. Yes. I don't, I don't think we can force undefined. Um, maybe if we type undefined. Undefined is supposed to happen. Welcome, undefined. See, it didn't understand it was undefined. It wasn't a real undefined, and it thinks my name is undefined. So it can be fully, it could be further edited to catch those errors. But I, I'm not quite sure how to force an undefined, but we have that possibility. So our point here was to try to deal with some of this, this input. Now, here's a, another possibility we haven't thought of, perhaps. What if I type this? Is it going to accept it? <coughs> Welcome, you so-and-so. Right? You see any Sam's yelling at me? Um, it'll take special characters. It'll take numbers. Right now, it doesn't care what kind of data goes in. We'll take a break, and then we will deal with that a little bit, how to kind of strip out uh, these characters that don't have a value. 
because right now we, we never said what is it what acceptable character set is there. Now it's not going to be perfect because I could type in my name, you know, cyborg009. Now that's valid. Uh, so we'll take a break and then we'll uh, deal with further some of this uh, some of this data and then of course displaying it on screen. That's the whole point of this. The alert is just to see if this works. It's going to be obvious when it pops up. But what I really want is after the person types their name, it's going to say in the app, "Welcome, Victor." It's going to say, "Take an art class, Victor." It's going to say, "Learn about computers, Victor." It's going to have the person's name throughout the app, not just a one-time pop-up. That's the whole point of what we're building to. So at 7:50, we'll take a break until 8, and then we'll go on.